Hello again, I'm Will, and I'd like to show you my favourite pieces in this new Embroiderers Guild exhibition here at Discover Bucks Museum in Aylesbury. The exhibition's called So New, and it focuses on recent additions to the Embroiderers Guild collection. Now, before I show you my favourites, I'll walk you around the gallery space so that you can get an overview, and whilst doing that, I will give you a bit of background information. The Embroiderers Guild has been very fortunate during the pandemic to receive a number of important gifts and bequests, which will really enrich its collection, both visually and historically. And perhaps most significantly, most of these new pieces that have come in are by named embroiderers. And the reason that that is significant is that in the past, great embroideries were rarely attributed to named craftspeople. The designer was usually well known because he was considered a fine artist, but the maker, the embroiderer, they were more often than not anonymous. Thankfully, this situation had begun to change, and by the 1940s, students working in Stitch were being encouraged uh, and taught to be designer makers. In other words, to completely own the creative process from beginning to end. And the public has now got used to this situation. And so today, the embroiderer is known by name and reputation. So all the works in this exhibition are by named embroiderers. And crucially, by embroiderers that in their lifetime did make or have made a significant contribution to the world of embroidery in terms of the, um, the books and the articles that they've written, uh, their teaching, the students that they've, they've taught, the exhibitions that they've put on. In other words, their legacy in the embroidery world. And you'll probably recognise many of the names in the exhibition because they include Jan Beanie, Val Campbell Harding, Arian Short, Vera Sherman, to name a few. So, to my favourites. And the first piece that I want to show you, it rather flies in the face of the old adage, save the best till last, because I want to start actually with my number one favourite piece in the exhibition. And it wasn't always my favourite piece. When I first saw it, it didn't scream, look at me. It's much more subtle than that. But the longer I've spent with it, and now seeing it here in the gallery space, I've really come to love it. And it's this piece on the wall over here, and it's by an artist called Francine Wilkins. Now this piece is called Wayne Wake, and it was made in about 2005. And I really love the, the subtle colours, the blue background and then the trees and the figures in brown. It's a, a limited colour palette, but it's really rather beautiful. Now Francine, she's based in Nottinghamshire today, but she did spend a number of years uh, living in Uganda. And the African landscape and its people and colours and wildlife had a profound effect on her work. And I think you can see that in the uh, subject matter here. But what's really lovely about this is that the closer you get to it, the more detail there is, and you can really see the beautiful stitch work. Now look at the trees there. It looks like Francine has used some sort of bark cloth to give the texture of the trees, which is really lovely. And I love the uh, stitches used for the branches of the trees. Um, forgive me, I'm not an embroiderer, so I'm not sure what those stitches are. Is it feather stitch, perhaps? The embroiderers amongst you will, will know better than I. Um, but the pièce de résistance of this work for me are the figures. I love the way Francine has created the patterns on the, the fabric of their clothes with some lovely stitch work there. And it really does evoke the sort of brightly coloured 
geometric patterns that you often find on African textiles. It's really cleverly done. And I also like the format of the, the picture because although it depicts a landscape, it's actually in portrait format, so it's more unusual in that regard. Okay, so my next piece that I'd like to show you is a nice contrast with Francine's piece because this next piece is a riot of colour. And actually, that's what drew me to it initially. When these pieces first arrived at the museum and I was unwrapping them to enter them into the collection, I knew from the moment that I unwrapped this next work that I was going to be a fan of this artist. And the artist in question is Eugenie Alexander. And it's this piece here. It's called Faces in the Jungle. Now, for, forgive the reflections on the glass. It's difficult to see it properly. But it's this beautiful jungle scene with lovely blue sky at the top, which really pulls it all together. And underneath, you've got this, as I say, a riot of colour. And in terms of the subject and the style, it's very reminiscent of the paintings of uh, the French painter Henri Rousseau. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if uh, Francine had been influenced by Rousseau's paintings. And actually that is one of the interesting um, features of, of this exhibition and the, the stories of the artists, is that a number of them came from traditional fine art backgrounds. So for instance, Eugenie, studied at Chelsea College of Art in the 1930s, and she was actually taught by Henry Moore and Graham Sutherland. And there are other artists in the exhibition who studied at Goldsmiths and Central St. Martins. So there's this really strong overlap between the traditional fine art world and the embroidery world, and I find that really interesting. But this is a, a fabric collage, so that's what Eugenie became well known for in the 1950s. Um, and the closer you get, you see these layers of fabric and lots of different stitch work and the, the materials. You've got beads as well there and the different animals, butterflies, the tiger. Is that a lion hiding there? An elephant? monkey. It really does invite you to, to take a good look. And there's a really lovely film made by Pathé Films in the 1950s which shows Eugenie at work. Uh, she's sitting at the sewing machine at home with her husband milling around in the background and she's sitting at the sewing machine with a box of fabric by her side and she's picking pieces of fabric out of the box, cutting them to shape and stitching them onto the work. And it's so evocative, it's really worth watching. It's still on YouTube, so you can, you can have a look for yourself. Okay, the next piece I'd like to show you offers a nice contrast with Eugenie's work because where Eugenie was a master of colour. The next artist was a master of line and she was a pioneer of machine embroidery and the artist is Joy Klukas. And this piece here I'd like to show you, it's called Daisies. And Joy Klukas came to prominence in the, uh, well from the 1960s and she was very well known for the intricacy of her stitched lines that she used in her work. So if I get up close onto this piece, you can see what I mean. It's beautifully detailed and she uses different density of, of stitch work to create different effects. It seems to become more detailed the closer you get to it. It's extraordinary a bit like nature itself, in fact. And it reminds me a little bit of uh, the old spirograph um, patterns that you could create, you know, in the 1970s and 1980s, the geometric shapes that you would create with the spirograph. A 
Okay, the next piece that I'd like to show you is, well, out of all the pieces in the exhibition, it's probably the most painterly, by which I mean, in terms of its look, it, it kind of looks like the thickly applied brush strokes of an oil painter's brush. The whole canvas is filled with, with texture and colour and stitch work. And the artist in question is Richard Box. And this is the piece that I'd like to show you. It's called Primroses, Violets and Celandines. And it was made in 2011. And Richard actually is another of those artists that came from a fine art background. So he studied uh, at Goldsmiths. He studied painting and lithography. And I think that really shows in his approach to his work. It is very painterly. And the way he works, he will always start from nature by drawing and painting from nature. And then he will create these fabric collages um, with uh, machine and hand embroidered stitch work on top. And they're just so dense. The, the closer you get to it, you just see the, the detail in there. It's extraordinary. And what I particularly like about this work is how the embroidery goes around the side. It covers the frame, so it's not in its own separate frame. The, uh, the embroidery has become the frame. It's all encompassing. And Richard, he, he had a, a teaching career into the 1980s um, at which point, I believe, he, he gave that up to focus on his um, art. And he's been working ever since. He regularly gives talks, uh, workshops, he writes books. Um, he's a very well-known figure in the embroidery world. Okay, so the final piece that I'd like to show you sort of stands alone really in this exhibition. It's a unique uh, piece in terms of its look and feel. And by that I mean that it's sort of timeless. So some of the pieces in this exhibition, um, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but you can date them in terms of the style and the colours that are used. But with this next piece, it's quite difficult to pinpoint the era that it's from, and I rather like that. So the imagery that it uses is Victorian, but it was actually made in the 1960s. But to my eye, it almost looks like it could have been made yesterday. And it's this piece here, made by Maureen Helsden in 1965. And it's a curious piece because it, it seems to more than any other work in the exhibition, fit into a traditional fine art mould. There's something conceptual going on here. There's a story that it's telling that is not immediately obvious. And so it's up to the viewer to try and work out what's going on. So it, it's gone beyond simply the techniques, the stitch techniques that are being employed and then it's going into the conceptual world and that makes it very intriguing to me um, and you've got the, the use of figures and text and stitch work it's this mishmash it's almost surreal or like a, a dada collage in its look now i don't know whether maureen screen printed these figures or if they are recycled um, printed figures from other fabrics, possibly the latter, but Maureen did use screen printing in her works. And she was also renowned for her use of contrast. So often she would have a, like a dark background and she would create contrast by having light stitch work and lighter fabrics um, appliqued on top. And you can see that here, this wonderful mannequin outlined in white here, which is very bold. And the same with the, the hand there against the, uh, the red fabric. And then the eye and the nose really creates a striking um, image. 
and then you've got this Victorian gent on the left observing um, who seems to be walking out from behind this cut fabric so his arm is partially hidden by the, the fabric there so it's, it's an intriguing piece and uh, I keep coming back to it and, and um, want to solve the puzzle if you like okay so they're my five favorite pieces in the exhibition I hope you've enjoyed seeing them and the exhibition will be on throughout 2022 so there's plenty of time for you to come along in person and, and see the exhibition if you're able to do that and it would be lovely to see you so until then cheerio